Welcome back to session three, a Euromotive training tutorial session on basic Vanos one. Car Commando on station, let's continue. Now we can come to the servicing of the Vanos or the resealing. This is, in simple language, resealing of a leaking Vanos unit. You need to follow these instructions so you don't screw the pooch when it's completed. At worst, bending valves is not a fun thing to experience. First note, that these following Vanos units are covered in this procedure. There is the factory OE number for the Vanos assemblies for the M50 TU and the US version S50. Also for the M52 and the S52 models. The single Vanos meaning only the intake valve timing is varied. Generally these model years are between 1993 and 1998. These model years have single Venos installed. You have your 3 series, your E36 of 93 through 97 origin, your 5 series or your E34 from 1993 to 95 and the E39 model 96 through 98, 7 series E38 1995 through 98, Z3 Roadster with the 2.8 E36 slash 7 chassis 96 through 98, M3 E36 model, 1994 through 99, and also the Z3 M series. Same thing, E36 slash 7 chassis, 1998 and 1999. This Vanos model had been experiencing a failure and was diagnosed with this failure caused by deterioration of the Vanos piston seal O-ring. Normal material for these O-rings is the material called Buna or nitrile or even NBR material. This O-ring has been found to harden, shrink, and have flat spots, especially if this engine had been running at a higher temperature in operation or even overheated several times. This deterioration is causing this O-ring to lose its function to seal around the pressured area on the piston, thus causing the Vanos to fail. Use of Viton or FKM material has similar functional characteristics as Buna, but has a much, much higher temperature and chemical resistance characteristics. The single Venos has one piston with one O-ring. This kit, as you can see up here on the screen, is very well made, at least in my humble opinion, are the best out there. Your part numbers on these is the BS011, the BS012 and the soft jaws, the 14001. So let's move on to the symptoms, then the repairs for one of these single veno seal failures. We'll start with the general symptoms. Overall loss of torque and power, particularly in the lower RPM range. Bogging, then surging, and an uneven power distribution and RPM transition. Engine hesitations at lower RPM range louder idle, and even intermittent idle RPM hiccups. Loss of power and bogging when the AC is enabled, thus putting more load on the engine. Increased fuel consumption, CO and emission levels are much higher, which are then outside the OBD2 requirements. All of these mentioned failures usually occur right around 3000 RPM. And here's another thing. These particular problems aren't only with the single Venos, they can also transition into the dual Venos system. You're going to see a lot of this stuff that's going on with the single Venos also in the same categories with the dual Venos systems. Information before we proceed with these Venos systems, one in particular with the diagnostic fault generation. In some cases, the DME generates a fault code. This is a prevalent fault code for the Venos failure, and you're going to see this also in the dual Venos system. Venos mechanically stuck or jamming. Needless to state, having a BMW TIS repair information system at your disposal for this required repair would be a big plus. So let's move on to the Venos resealing procedure. Approximate labor time about six hours probably the first time that you'll do this job. It is important, I don't care how good you guys are at fixing cars, don't get too cocky as when you get too cocky you're gonna make a mistake and in turn it's gonna cost you buku bucks. 
So take your time when you do this job the first, second, or third time. And it doesn't mean that you got to hurry after you get to know these systems well, because here's the ticket. Once you know what you're doing, it's not going to take you six hours to do. These engines are valve benders, have all the following appropriate tools and parts ready prior to starting this job, because you don't need to stop right in the middle of things. Not only that, but you'll need certain tools and parts to do this job right. Don't shortcut the job the first time, or you'll probably be sorry. So enough of the warnings. I think you get it. You want to be proud of the work you performed when it's all said and done. I know I always had that feeling of pride when I did get it right. I'm going to include following the information with this procedure. So you might want to jot some of this down, get your pens and paper, and let's pay attention. There's the kit that you're going to be using. Remember the BS-011, BS-012, and the 14001. This is the general kit that you're going to use to reseal this single vanos. Here are some of the parts that will be required also, or that is that I usually used when I did a single vanos reseal. It's going to require a vanos gasket. There's the OE number. Vanos oil pipe washer. A valve cover gasket set for that particular M50 or M52 engine. And it also includes these following parts. 15 valve cover grommets. Now, obviously, I didn't think I had to put 15 of those up here on the page in literal sense, as I consider them a requirement, or at least, again, in my opinion. Oil filler gasket. Now, being a professional automotive tech for more than 40 years, I've learned this lesson well, as wisdom is an accumulation of pain. Things get broken, and things get gone during a job, especially when you think it's one of those easy jobs. On that statement, I'd advise you to purchase the rest of these following items. The cover bolt and nut caps, cover pads, shroud rivets, air duct rivets, and radiator overflow neck for the E39. And like this E39 radiator overflow neck, for an additional 25 bucks, it's worth it. Trust me. Because here's the thing, fellas. If you break that, this job is going to be on the back burner because... What do you think the odds are that your local dealership's got one of those in stock? General hand tools will be a requirement. And as a professional, you get to know exactly what you're going to need for the next time. You're probably going to need some specialty tools. But for those that are doing this the first time, again, pay attention here. We're going to start with the removal of the valve cover. First of all, remove all the ground straps and brackets. Keep note that on the M52, the ground strap is at cylinders 1 and 6. On the M50 model engines, including the TU version, it has a ground strap at only cylinder 6. There's a little hint where you can tell the difference between those two. And don't forget to remove the four valve cover mounting bolts, studs, with the washers and grommets at the center of the valve cover. There are 11 valve cover mounting bolts and washers. Don't forget those pesky rear ones. Remove the valve cover vent hose at the right front corner. And that's a pretty good example of the M52. Now, here's another thing too, fellas. You know, these hoses are plastic and rubber. But after they've been under the engine compartment, expose the heat and very hot conditions, their lab would be more plastic than rubber. So let's be a little careful when you're prying this stuff off. Now on the M50 engine, pry up the retaining clip and pull off the connector using a flathead screwdriver. But a little finesse here, fellas. Don't be a gorilla when removing the hoses, as it might be brittle due to the heat. Again, you don't want to be cranking on this job and then all of a sudden can't finish the job because of a hose. Now once you've got all those done, is removing the six coils. And you're going to place the coil harness aside from the valve cover. It's been exposed to heat, and it could be brittle. Be a little finesse with this. Disconnect the ignition coil electrical harness, as you can see there in the picture. For each coil, pull up the coil connector, the metal lock, and pull off the cable and electrical connector. For the M52 engine, 
Remove the coil harness ground wire from the valve cover stud located between coils 2 and 3. Maintain coil cylinder association for reinstallation. And the reason I'm saying this that when you scan this car before you tore it down, if you pull up a code for a misfire in that cylinder, well, you already have the coil off, so what you might want to do is swap the coil and see if that misfire moves. That's just a general example. I usually mark the coils before I reinstall them just in case of that development of a misfire. This is so I can make any comparison to any codes that might have been in the engine after I scanned it before I started the job. You do scan the entire vehicle before performing any work, right? Remove the coils. And here's a little tip. The M50 and M50 TU engines, the coils are held in place with nuts. On the M52 engines, coils are held in place with bolts. Once all this is done, Prepare to wrestle off that valve cover, and I use that term loosely, ever so gently with your gasket scrape. These are plasticized gaskets, and what I mean by that, the engine heat turns that rubber into plastic. When these gaskets get plasticized, they blast all over the place. Plasticized rubber gaskets tend to blow apart in a gazillion pieces, pieces that drop down into the head and make a mess of the entire oil system. Not only that, if the previous guy that worked on this car may have had that valve cover on it, might have used the Gorilla Snot instead of RTV. Oh, that's going to be fun. So again, gently. Usually the rear cover perimeter half moon seals, due to gluing, are usually very uncooperative. You're going to replace the gasket anyway, right? So now you're at this point here where you're going to remove the intake camshaft cover. You're going to pull up those release clips. Get that out of your way from the engine bay. Once you've done that, you got this. Still with me? So at this point here, we're going to call this the end of session three. Get ready for session four. As session four is, we're going to be aligning all the timing marks on this motor so we can begin the procedure to reseal this Venus. Until then, this is the Car Commando, signing off.